Okay. <clears throat> okay, so today is the day I am pouring the back of the guitar, at least. <laughs> um, I'll pour the front another day whenever this dries. But I'll kind of quickly walk you through the prep process and then I'll get to pouring. So I plugged each hole um, with toothpicks, the smaller like screw holes with toothpicks. And then I plugged the big holes with tape, as you can see. Um, and then even these smaller, but not too small holes here, I plugged and just I cut, it, cut out tape around them to keep paint from going in there. Um, but yeah, I have all the paints mixed up here on the sides. Um, I mixed them all a two to one ratio, so two acrylic paint to one pouring medium. Um, and I also added a few splashes, like, yeah, I guess splashes, like a few drops of this silicone pouring oil. Um, but yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get with it. First things first is I did make sure that the uh, guitar was level and pretty darn level, um, even if I turned it a little bit sideways here. Well, that's not a good example, I guess, because it's on a tilt. But yeah, that's good there. Um, yeah, I think I'm ready to get going into it. I got my straw, my paintbrush, and my heat gun ready. So I'm gonna get to pouring, and this is what I've finally been waiting for. Editing me here. Uh, I just wanted to put in a quick note about what I did wrong in this process, or what I should have done is I didn't like how later you'll see in a second that I pick up the guitar and move it around. Uh, I shouldn't have done that on the front side and you'll see why whenever I get there. But what I should have done is move it around by hand uh, and kept it kind of thick. But uh, whenever I ended up doing that, or maybe thin, but at least moving it around and just getting a base of black, that's all I really wanted to do. But what I ended up doing was turning the guitar too much and it ran down the other side and like streaked. Uh, and I didn't notice that until I did the front of the guitar, which it streaks on the back and covers up the design. So I was kind of upset about that, but um, a quick interjection as I'm working on it here. Uh, so that way, you know, as you're watching me, you can learn from my mistakes. pretty sweet turning out really nicely I, I honestly really enjoy how much dark space I'm getting in all this because one thing I didn't want to do was overcrowd this 
with <clears throat> the acrylic paint um, of other colors. So I think that's turned out nicely. I'm going to let it sit and pray that this turns out well. <laughs> so I'll give you guys an update on what it looks like in the future um, as soon as it finishes drying. So one thing I noticed as I was cleaning up, I noticed that it's starting to pull away from the sanded surface here. So I'm kind of dabbing it in and then I'm going to go through and kind of blow it down one more time. And I figured I'd get this on film because the problem is, is this surface is just so slanted. I'm trying to make it, I'm getting globs of the black paint that's on the ground here or on the table and then just putting it on there. Pretty thick about as thick as I can make it um, just so that way I can make sure there's enough to grab on and I figure black would be easiest just because it can kind of grab it but like I said never done this I'm just seeing how it goes so yeah I was just going through running my fingers under the guitar to make sure there's no drippage and then yeah just like that just running it under making sure that there's no drippage and I'm cleaning it off because I see people where you can like cut it off but I really want this to be an awesome and playable guitar and so as little paint that I can have pushing out the body of this guitar um, would be ideal so yeah that's that's what I have for now Okay, on to the front of the guitar now. Finally. Um, so, I got all the paints mixed up. I did it a little bit differently. I did, I used a tablespoon of, and as part of the mixing rather than trying to use the cups because I ended up wasting too much last time. So, I made a little bit smaller cups because I don't need that much color. But without further ado, let's get into it and let's start pouring the front side of this guitar. Um, I taped everything and I plugged the holes with toothpicks, so we should be good to go. I have my straw, a little paintbrush, and the heat gun ready to go. I made sure that the area was level, uh, as you can see there, so it's level enough. <laughs> um, but should be good, so let's dive right in. Okay, so just to reiterate, my mistake here was... Um, Pouring it and then tilting it. I, I kind of mentioned it and you see me doing cleanup towards the end of this video. I really, regrettably, that was probably the biggest mistake I made uh, when pouring this on the double side. I just didn't even think about the paint pouring down the back side of the guitar that I already finished, which was very frustrating. Um, but that's why I did the back first compared to the front because I knew that I'd probably mess up on the back and the front is the most important anyway. That's what most people are going to see. So, um, yeah, as you'll see, the front turns out amazing, and it looks awesome, um, but I, I kind of struggled with trying not to get um, the cups, and I pr tried to put paper there. It, it was just kind of a mess, if I'm being honest. I would definitely do it differently next time. I think I'd build, uh, what you end up seeing me with the resin, I build a handle to hold the guitar, and I think I just prop and level based on that handle that ties into the where the body of the guitar touches the neck and screws in. I kind of build a handle out of wood, and then I use that for the resin part and I think I'll just have that for the whole process for the pouring process um, but definitely a huge letdown whenever I realize that um, but nothing really you could do I kind of start to realize it here and I'm like oh son of a gun <laughs> but nothing you can do it already happened and uh, yeah so enjoy the rest of this as I get on to actually pouring the front of the guitar
Okay, so this is how it turned out here. Um, once I took the tape off, I still haven't taken it off in that center part there. Um, but it's looking pretty cool. Incredible textures to it. It's gonna be awesome. So, all that I have left now is, um, I just gotta put the epoxy coat on and put it all back together. So, I'll show you whenever that's done. Okay, so this is the last round of the testing. Um, I'm gonna apply epoxy to uh, one of the circles that I have that I did the test acrylic pores on. I just wanna see how it reacts to the wood, the surface, and the paint. Um, make sure that it dries well and looks good. So I'm gonna mix these up one to one for just a very small batch and then apply it to the little <coughs> wood circle. So um, I'll show you how that goes. Okay, um, so I've got the resin mixed up here. Uh, it's still kind of getting some of the bubbles out, but I think they're so small. I'm just going to go ahead and work this in because it doesn't have that long of a curing time or of a working time. Um, so one thing it did say was to use a sponge, but I only have one of those, so I'm going to use a brush. <laughs> Doing the instructions the right way. But, you know, it also mentioned to do this on a flat surface do like the flat side you know so it'd be wise for me to do it this way but I'm curious to see if I can get all of it in one go so that is why I'm doing it this way but I'm gonna keep working it here and see what we end up with Paper screen. Now for the heat gun. 